Hello, in this tutorial video, we will be speaking about suppliers and purchase orders and how that can affect your inventory. So at the very beginning, you should have at least one supplier set up. You can find the suppliers right here. And in this dashboard, you will see the suppliers created. You can filter them out by various filter options and you can have those filters saved for later. Now how to create a supplier on the right side, you have a blue button. If you click on it, this pop-up will appear. You will input the details. Email is particularly important because all the purchase orders will be sent directly to suppliers email that you provide the address line and the payment terms. If you had them agreed upon with the suppliers, and then you just click save and the supplier will be created. Now inside the inventory, you should apply suppliers for your products. So if you open any product, you will see right here that you can apply a supplier for that particular product. And now the system knows that you are getting this item from this particular supplier. Now let's go to purchase orders. In this dashboard, you will see various columns that will indicate some information about the purchase order you just created. So the purchase number, supplier for which the purchase order was created, contact person. Usually it is the person that you input in the suppliers when you are creating one, the status says, then tags. If you want to tag, you can just check mark and add a tag. Then total created time, expected date when you are expecting to receive that item and the actual received date for the payment. I will show how to make it as paid a little bit later. So at the very beginning, let's look how to create a purchase order. You should detect a button on the right side, which is blue by clicking on it. You will see this pop up and then you have to input the necessary information. So first of all, a supplier name, then the term in how many days you're expecting that item to arrive. The suppliers are the ones that you're created in the supplier menu, then reference number. It is not mandatory, but sometimes you have a reference number with your suppliers. Then the date created is automatically set to the day you are in right now, but you can choose whichever you want. And then the expected date for when you're expecting to receive that order. Now shipping address. This is your shipping address. Where do you want to receive the goods from the supplier? And as well, you can select different uh, warehouses if you have multiple warehouses functionality turned on. If you need the multiple warehouses, just write in our live chat and we will make it available. And now you can input the products that you want to order from the supplier. You can choose by supplier SKU, product name, or your own SKU. You can add a product, enter its quantity, rate, tax, and then you can even leave a note for a supplier and then just click raise order and this will raise the order. Let's make one example so that you would see how everything looks. Just before that, I wanted to mention that on top, you can select all purchase orders that you have created, the drafts that are still in the process of the creation received the ones that have already arrived to your warehouse and raised the ones that are still on the way. So let's go to the inventory and let's select a product for which we want to order a little bit more. For instance, we have pants XXL blue, which at the moment, as you can see regarding the reorder point, are soon going to be out of stock and we want to have a little bit more and pay attention to the awaiting column because right now it is at zero. But once you create a purchase order, this number will increase. So let's go to purchase orders, create a purchase order. Oh, by the way, let's double check if the item has a supplier already set up because that is important. Yes, as we can see, a supplier is set to any Michael Jackson. So let's come back to the purchase order, create a purchase order, and then select the supplier and Michael Jackson term is automatically set to 14 days, but you can change that. Then the day created. And let's say we're expecting this item to arrive in two weeks. 
10. Uh, let's select the main warehouse and then the product. So we had XXL pants blue. And now let's take the quantity, for instance, 40. Yep. And now for how much we are paying to receive that item, let's say it's 20. By the way, the rate that you're inputting here will also appear in the buy price in the inventory, which I will soon show you. And then we have a tax, let's say it's 20%, and we can leave a note for the supplier, the liver after lunch for instance and let's raise this order now you will see this order as raised and inside the inventory if we will find the same pants as you can see right now the waiting is 14 the exact amount that we ordered and if we move to the buy price as you can see we ordered it for 20 so you see the price as 20 here as well and also you can see for how much you're selling. Now let's imagine that the purchase order is created correctly. One important thing to remember, when it's raised, it does not mean it has been sent to the supplier. You just created the purchase order. You should open it up and double check if everything is okay. The note is here, the products are here, the correct supplier is selected, your shipping address is selected correctly. You can even click on actions and you can print the document just to see what the supplier will receive. This is what the supplier would get. You double check the information if everything is okay here. And then if you want to email it directly to your supplier, click on email and purchase orders. And then the email will be sent. Only at this moment did the actual purchase order arrived to the supplier's email address. In other words, if it's just raised and you didn't click on the email, that means that it is just raised inside multi-orders. Again, we can look at actions like print, download, edit, or copy. These are a couple of actions that you can take if you want to print out, let's say, a purchase order for your accounting purposes. Maybe you made a mistake and you want to edit it, or just make a copy of the same exact purchase order. Now, if we go back to purchases, we can see that it is unpaid because we haven't paid the supplier yet. Let's imagine that your accounting has just paid for the purchase order and either you or they can come to the purchase order and right here on the green button, mark it as paid. When that is done, if we come back to the purchase orders, you will see a green check mark indicating that the purchase order has been paid for and you don't need to pay for it later. Now, if we open up the purchase order and let's imagine the items have arrived to your warehouse, so you should receive it. So right here is a button called receive order. If you click on it, you can receive all. For this case, we will use receive all because I only have one item or if you would have multiple items here, but only a few have arrived, you could click receive selected, and then you would just receive the ones that you have selected by check marking right here, receive and receive selected, as you can see. But for the moment, let's just do it in a simple way as receive all. Now, sometimes it can happen that you didn't receive all of the goods you ordered 40 pants but only 30 arrived so you can input the number that actually arrived or maybe you have some items that have been broken during the trip so you can again just increase this number or decrease it accordingly so let's imagine all 40 pants have arrived we click receive order and as you can see we are, have the awaiting at zero we are no longer waiting for this product it status have changed to received it is a paid now let's come back to the inventory and see what happened there so the waiting is no longer 40 we had 18 previously as if you remember and now it increased to 58 so whenever you receive an order the total stock automatically updates and this information is automatically sent to your marketplaces so in the both marketplaces in this case wix and woocommerce the quantity of the item automatically increased so this is how the purchase order receiving works also one last thing to mention is that we have 
auto purchase orders and you can select reorder point all or orders so what is the difference between them so reorder point inside the inventory you can see that some items have a reorder point reached so they turn red and this indicates that these items are below the reorder point and you should order some more of course just double check if these items have a supplier set up in the case that it is not set up then the purchase order automation will not work correctly so always have a supplier selected so inside the purchase orders if you would click on reorder point it will create purchase orders for the correct supplier and it will input the correct products that have reached the reorder point one thing to mention is that it will automatically select the difference between the reorder point and the available so in this case if i have the reorder point at 15 and my available right now is 9 so the purchase order will be created for six items to reach the reorder point if you want to order more just go inside the purchase order and just simply you know edit it let's take this purchase order as an example action edit and then you can increase the quantity by how many you want and the last thing is auto purchase all order this correlates together with your orders so if you have some orders inside but you're using let's say drop shipping or other things you can create purchase orders by the already ordered items and it will create purchase orders that you can send to your suppliers so they could send the items to you or if you have an agreement with them that they would create uh, the shipment themselves and send the products to your customer so the auto po for all orders will create purchase orders by the orders you have at the moment in the new section always remember that on the top right corner we have this little question mark which you can click and you will be redirected directly to our uh, q a section about integrations orders inventory etc here you will find tutorial guides how to correctly integrate any of your sales channels as well and as i said previously if you have any questions just write directly to our live chat or give us a call and we will help you with the process of the integration i hope this video was useful and as always have a nice day